Hello everyone and welcome back. So in this video I will be showing you two different solutions for some specific problems I faced and hopefully it, you will find it useful and apply it to your future projects. So let's get into it. So I've been working on this IV generator tool. It's not really finished or very good right now but hopefully in the future I will get it done. But I will today show you how you can approach a specific problem I had. So basically I am scattering some points on the surface, some initial points. And I have some target positions to, to those points to, to reach, let's say. And I need the points to be constrained to the geometry. So for that I'm using a soft solver. And the first thought would be to use a... Um, a ray project with the mode set to minimum distance so loading the geometry in the second input and ray projecting the points but as you can see they they will get stuck if i enable the ray project they will get stuck around those concave areas so if i show you the geometry again so they will get stuck right here in these areas when doing the the ray projection the ray projection so an approach I found was to use instead an SDF, a smoothed out SDF. So this is the initial geometry converted to VDB. And then if I apply a smooth, basically a bevel, and I save this, I output this as an SDF. Then in the sub solver, I can load that SDF in the second input. And in this wrangle, I'm basically moving the points where the SDF value is zero, so along the surface. And if I enable that, as you can see, the points will, the green points, which are the initial points that are traveling, will not get stuck because we have that big bevel or that big VDB smooth. So then you might ask, well, uh, now the points will not respect the initial geometry, so this these uh, concave areas and whatnot. So what we can do then after doing the trail, we can uh, do like an exploded view on the points by moving them along the normal. And then we add the points and we can ray project again using the same uh, logic, but this time using the, the original STF. In this case, I moved it a bit out, so with a dilate. That way, the um, the vines don't don't get inter don't intersect with the geometry. So, and if we do this with the same uh, STF projection, we end up with the uh, with the vines along the surface and not intersecting. And most of and for the most part is respecting the original geometry. So yeah, that hopefully this was useful to you and let's get into, into the second case. So now we will get back to a familiar scene if you've been following the channel. Basically I have a mesh that has been converted from VDB operations and uh, it will be difficult to select the seams and do manual UVs. So today I'm going to show you a similar approach when it comes to the orientation of the UVs but uh, a different one when it comes to selecting the seams, which might be of useful to you. So I'm starting with a mesh with no UVs, then I'm doing a remesh, so we can work with less polygons, this way the calculations will be faster and more easy to control. Then doing a basic ray projection, just to make sure the, the corners are sharp enough. And if you remember, and if you watch that particular video, um, we use the shortest path to select the, the corner points or the, the hard edges. But in this case, I'm going to use the cluster nodes based on the normal. So if I show you that attribute and disable this gradient, you can see that it's isolating the different pieces pretty well by using the normals. And the way I found this works best is by using setting, computing the normals on the vertices with a cusp angle of zero and then promoting it to point with the promotion method set to mode. You can try other approaches, but modes work really well for me. Then just promoting these to a primitive, attrib primitive attribute. 
And then we can just select the boundary edges, as you can see with this group from attribute boundary. And we already have the seams for the UV flatten. So if you don't care about the orientation, this is this will give you already a pretty good result. But I want to approach today how to do the UV rotation. So the UV orientation in this case to set the, the UVs properly. So first of all, we are creating a mask along the Y. So using the relative point bounding box Y component. So from zero to one, this way we can clearly uh, see which way is up. Creating a connectivity based on the UVs. So each UV island will get uh, a different ID. We promote the UVs to a point attribute while splitting them also. And then we move this to move the UVs to 3D space by using at P equals V at UV. And we also storing a rest position before that. So later we can we can get get the initial mesh back. You can see that this gradient, this mask along Y is telling us which way is up. So the red values. So we need to rotate them somehow. And for that, I'm first going to measure the gradient of that mask based on a piece attribute, in this case, cluster. So I can show you that gradient. So it's looking something like this. So you can clearly see if I show you also this one. So it's pointing in the red direction. So if you watch this one, it's pointing down. That one is pointing sideways. And now we just need to calculate the, the angle. So that's what I'm doing in this wrangle. So we get the gradient prim attributes. So by using the at prim num, and then we can calculate the angle. And this select uh, function is like an if statement. So if the length of the gradient, because if I show you this gradient, so in here in these pieces, I don't want to rotate them. And since the gradient here, because they are facing the y axis, since the gradient here is less than this threshold value, in this case I found 0.1 worked well. Uh, I will see if if they are not bigger than 0.1, the length of the gradient is not bigger than 0.1. We set the the angle rota the rotation angle to zero. Otherwise, we calculate the angle between the x component and the y component. Then we get the UV island center, and finally we do the quant quaternion mat by creating the the quaternion first so with the the angle to rotate and the axis which will be around the, the z axis then we make sure we rotate from the center so we need to subtract the current uv position by its pivot that, that's why we save this uv island center and then we we rotate we rotate them using that quaternion and from that position and finally, we just uh, multiply. We just add the rotation and the pivot back. So if we check the final result, we get the UVs oriented properly. Then we can just attribute swap the P for the rest, and we get the position back. And since the UVs might be overlapping due to the rotation, as you can see, we can just UV layout them making sure we set to no rotations and the axis alignment to none so it doesn't rotate our islands then just promote the point the uv attribute to vertices and fuse the points and finally we transfer back the uvs to the original mesh as you can see so going from this one to this one so yeah, that's basically what I had for you today. Hopefully this was useful. Let me know in the comments. And don't forget you can grab the scenes on my Patreon alongside with hours of ex exclusive tutorials. And I also have some courses in there. So yeah, make sure to check that out. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.